Welcome to Building the Future, hosted by Kevin Horick. With millions of listeners a month, Building the Future has quickly become one of the fastest rising programs with a focus on interviewing startups, entrepreneurs, investors, CEOs, and more. The radio and TV show airs in 15 markets across the globe, including Silicon Valley. For full show times, past episodes, or to sponsor the show, please visit buildingthefutureshow.com. Welcome back to the show. Today we have Michael Maurice. He's the co-founder and COO at TaxFile. Michael, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. Yeah, I'm excited to have you on the show. I think what you guys are doing at TaxFile is actually really innovative and cool. But maybe before we get into that, let's get to know you a little bit better and start off with where you grew up. So I grew up in Miami, Florida, uh, as did my co-founder nice. uh, to a Cupid family. <laughs> yeah. Um, and basically, uh, went to a university of Miami down here, uh, after high school okay. and there basically got interested in law okay. and ended up going to, uh, to law school after everything was said and done. What, what made you get and... interested in law? So I it was actually business law. I was actually involved in the, the business program at UM and I started kind of getting into that. It was something that really interested me. And I thought that it would kind of go very along with my future plans. And that I was been, always been very entrepreneurial by nature. Okay. Been, started my first company, I think, when I was man, 14, 15. Wow. And a few companies uh, during school as well. And I thought this was something that would uh, go very well and would actually help me out going into the future. You know, I, I think understanding law, no matter what you do, whether you start your own company or work for somebody else, or is always good, right? Absolutely. Proves invaluable. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. So you get out of school. Walk us through your career up until coming up with the idea and co-founding TaxFile. So I got out of school and I ended up working at a litigation firm where we basically focused on corporate litigation and corporate compliance on parity of subject matters. Um, it was a great learning experience and proved invaluable and uh uh, yeah, I created a fine skill set that I can use going forward, but I always intended to use my my legal skill sets in my own endeavors. Um, and through that experience, though, I, I kind of started seeing a lot of, how do I say, in inefficiencies and issues with the professional industries as a whole. Particularly, I was looking at it very much from the legal industry, <laughs> to be honest. Right. Uh, you looked at all these new uh, models that were coming around at the time. Uh, this was back you got, man, this was back 2012 or so, where everyone saw you have the new Uber models coming out, we have the on-demand, and it, it started making me think, like, why do we have to operate in these professional industries with these inflated price points? Uh, it, it's so inefficient. It just didn't make sense. Why hasn't somebody kind of stepped in here and kind of uh, changed it up here? Started kind of looking into it. It was, there's a lot of barriers. Uh, long story short, there's a lot of barriers in changing that for the legal industry. But I was talking with a friend of mine, Ricky Lavinia, uh, that I've been friends with since middle school. Um, he actually went to UM with me as well. He went and became a CPA. Kind of approached me with a great idea because I was actually getting involved with a uh, tech startup at the time. Ricky goes, hey, why don't we approach this from a tax standpoint and look at it in terms of on-demand taxes? We, we have CPAs, our licensed individuals, our licensed professionals. And we can, uh, with a wide skill set here, they can deliver optimal quality for really reduced prices. You take out, at the end of the day, when you look at professional industries, you take out all that overhead. And you're not paying for that overhead, you're paying for the work to, uh, that has to be delivered here. And I, I, I thought that made a, a tremendous amount of sense from, from every aspect. Um, started taking a deeper dive into it. And the more we looked into it, it, it made much more sense than, I guess, the legal idea. Um, at the end of the day, when you look at tax returns, there's a certain amount of forms and schedules that need to be filled out. And we looked at it from the, at least from pricing and the work on the quality of work that has to be done. It, it was an easy barrier and low hanging fruit to just start there. Whereas look, we, we get those schedules done. We, uh, count the set of schedules at set complexity for X number of price and able to move forward after that. Uh, that was an easier sell here. I mean, you looked at legal back in the day, or even now you ask, you have one issue to uh, multiple solutions depending on the type of attorneys who want to approach it. Um, so we, we kind of got together, saw 
we went through the business plan there and brought our third co-founder, Wilson Hygen, uh, which is uh, another family friend of mine. And Will was actually working and created uh, an e-prescription service uh, for one of the largest uh, e-prescribers down here in South Florida, multi-billion dollar company. Yeah. I mean, his background made all the sense in the world from the technical perspective because it was all about uh, matching and delivery within HIPAA compliant uh, workspace right. here. Interesting. So we, we thought that this uh, perfectly matched up with the level of security and quality that we wanted to kind of uh, put out there in our own platform. So <laughs> no, that, that's where we started with what we all got. So did yeah. you walk us through getting the first version built? Did you guys raise some money? Did you bootstrap? Walk us through that. Yeah. So I want to say that we were probably on to be between about six to nine months or so, uh, just refining the, the business plan, refining the model, and pretty much going out to the, talking to different investors uh, simultaneously, trying to get the money so that we can actually uh, be able to go after this. Um, in August of 2015, we uh, closed a small round, friends and family round. We raised about, about $225,000, if I recall. Right. Uh, and that gave us enough runway to at least get to uh, an MVP product. Right. Okay. By by March of 2016, we ended up launching our MVP product. Very straightforward app. And our sole point here was to see if there was actually uh, interest in this type of uh, service. Um, needless to say, we got a lot of interest very quickly. Um, it kind of set the scale. Uh, we were onto something pretty big here. Uh, and launching, we were named one of the best new apps in the App Store and featured by App Store, which that, that in itself was a crazy experience. And uh, we got a lot of a lot of a lot of clients fairly quickly when that happened. Um, we we want to start small though. That that product was <laughs> very straightforward, very simple, and it was only for individual tax returns. Since then, we've kind of been growing uh, every year, adding a little bit more uh, in terms of the different type of products and complexities in which we can get into. Sure. Uh, from obviously from after individual, the next progression was business taxes, which was an easy step uh, going forward. There, we also started throwing in uh, a service there where we can match you with the right individual to help um, help answer any questions that you may have, and uh, and it's kind of um we can speak to them. Where you can basically speak, go in and ask, and any issues that you may have, they can consult on you with you. On uh, those on uh, those problems, and then from there it's just kind of going to bookkeeping and other lines of services as well. P pretty much anything within the the CPA uh, skill set. At the end of the day, what we do uh, is very different. Uh, when back then we started looking at the options that uh, we were facing in terms of the competition in the market, you had the do-it-yourself products such as the TurboTax of the world, and you had the uh, the done-for-you solutions like the H&R blocks of the world. Well. The do-it-yourself products, it didn't, for us, it didn't make a lot of sense uh, in that, first off, they don't do every type of complexity, and it's uh, extremely cumbersome in that it takes the average individual to go on there and do it. It takes them, it can take anywhere from between four to six hours to do a return there. And then when you look at the H&R uh, block products, which are done for you uh, products, it, it, it was inconvenient. You had to go into the store. You, you're still paying extremely high price points. When you looked at us, we basically gave everybody an upfront price quote uh, for a licensed individual to do the work for them right there and then. And part of the thing that we were doing here is that when we were asking certain onboarding questions, where we think this is kind of like our secret sauce here, where you ask the questions up front, determine what the complexity is, and you're able to get that individual uh, the, an upfront price quote for what it takes to do those taxes. Now, at the same time, we're actually using that same information to match that type of skill set and experience. That the CP on the back end that we'll need, which we have a complete dossier and all of our uh, on all of our professionals. So basically, you start uh, we're able to match any given job with any given complexity to the right type of a uh, professional that has a skill set to do that. Basically, uh, when we launched that, it was a service that people saw instant value here. When you were comparing, like you're comparing the type of service that you're getting here to an H and R block solution, we were about 40% cheaper on average. Wow. Um, and when, even when comparing to other professional firms, it was drastically cut pricing. So, no, I interesting. So, I want to dive a little bit deeper into the different types of user because you quickly kind of covered it. But 
who's kind of the ideal client for you guys? So that, that would actually fall down to uh, two different buckets, I believe, here, because we have our B2C offering and we have our B2B offering. Okay. So our, our, our B2C offering, let, let's start there. Well, you know, maybe, maybe it actually makes more sense to just start off from a little bit higher level and kind of say how we got into these two, two different paths here. Sure. Um, so in, in creating this matching algorithm and, uh, and we're, we're able to um, match these complicated uh, type of returns and on different complexities, with the skill sets of the individuals, we actually created an, uh, an amazing uh, portal and engine here. And with that technology, it could actually be used for se several different uses. Uh, pretty much in 2016, no, end of 2016, early 2017, we ended up partnering with a, with a large CPA firm where they want to actually use that, that uh, as an internal workflow and routing tool. Right. When you look at the way that this uh, was built, it makes all the sense in the world. Um, I mean, at that time, we, we were imagining thousands of returns here with two or three people on customer service here. It made all the sense, and it was uh, due to the eloquence of the technology itself. The technology basically had not not just uh, not, not just got the CPAs the information that they needed so they can start working right away in a much more efficient fashion, but it also allowed them to uh, exchange documents, able to talk on the talk together on there, and it, it, it created a lot of efficiencies here. From the CPA's uh, point of view, it, it was pretty much they were willing to work for less because when you look, when you compare it to the the hourly wage that they were earning at a CPA firm, they're actually earning more here, and it's just pure efficiency because it's just uh, they able to sit down and start working. And from the customer side, they're able to get get an, a professional here to this quickly. But now. What that technology did, though, is when you applied that to a large firm with tens of thousands of professionals within it, you, you, all you have to essentially do is change the onboarding process and the onboarding questions and just uh, capture different type of data points here. And in doing so, you're able to uh, match and route different type of work here. So when you look at the typical CPA firm, you have taxes, you have consultations, you have auto practices, whatever it may be. You ask the right questions and you're able to match it to the right skill set, you're able to route to the right person, and then that's how it kind of kind of evolved here so going back to the question here what our typical uh customer when we look at the b2c the b2c tends to be that that that, that more that, that that younger generation where they they start growing up with uber here and that they're used to that on demand they're used to uh, ordering uh airbnbs they're, they they want things um quicker than they want it done now but they expect to have the same quality as always um, we, and, and on top of that, we're looking at for people that are trying to get a little bit more complex. So when a, a lot of times uh, you compare yourself to a do it yourself option, where you look at the triple tax of the world, Hey, it might be pretty simple when you're a student or when you just have one W2, not, not, a, not a big issue here, but they started to quickly start getting more complicated as you go buying a home, getting married, having a family, uh, starting making investments, starting your own company, your taxes just starts becoming a lot more complicated. And that's the type of individual that we're trying to look for. Uh, in order to assist there. They're the ones that need that, 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 that professional help more than anybody. And as far as, I guess, uh, the B2C customers, uh, I'm sorry, the B2B customer here, um, pretty much any, any CPA firm where we've currently partnered with about 40 uh, plus CPA firms. Um, uh, it's been great. We were actually able to do it in two different manners here with any CPA firm depending on their needs. One of them is that they can just outsource the work directly to our, our group of uh, CTAs. So think about it. Uh, one of these firms is able to charge X amount for a price point for their clients. Well, they're able to outsource that work to us without, without incurring any uh, additional cost of hiring uh, a, a workforce for the, the seasonal workforce um, for a few months here. So what ends up happening here is that they're basically able to just also set that work to us. They know that our work is extremely, how do I say, we undercut the market and we're very competitive in terms of market rates for that quality. And it's something that they're able to just basically get from there and they're, they're able to charge their clients and push that work forward after that and review and sign off on their own here. And then we have, that's the, we also have the, the, how do I say here, the type of client here that needs that internal routing engine, that internal workflow tool here. Given the size of the firm, we're, we're basically a one-stop solution for whatever that firm's needs may be. 
I interesting. So how have you guys managed where to take the product over the last number of years? Because you've probably gotten tons of requests and potentially pulled in a bunch of different directions and, and making those decisions on, on what features to add or, or what verticals to add can be really daunting. So how have you guys managed that? That's actually an, a, a great question, but something that we actually haven't, actually haven't found that daunting for ourselves here. What you got to realize is that we, well, the first product that we launched here was our BSC product, and that was the product that we launched with. So based on reiterations, we, 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 we uh, had to reiterate based on, I guess, the most stringent standards, which is the consumer market here. If your app doesn't work right, it doesn't look right, it doesn't function correctly, guess what? Your consumers aren't going to use it. Uh, that's going to be very telling here. So what we actually found here is that when we started offering it at a, in a B2B setting, it was tenfold above anything else that they've used. Um, and when you look at the typical uh, B2B um, and, and staff uh, models and licensing of the, the, the options that they typically go with, it, it was a tenfold better experience here. Now, in terms of the new features here, this is something that has actually worked out because it's almost, we find that it's almost the same features that we use for B2C or needed for B2B can be used for one and the same. Oh, At the end of the day, by enhancing the product, it creates a better experience for everybody because, how do I say, if, uh, if we end up so, uh, resolving or creating a feature to resolve a certain issue on the B2C side, that ends up getting used on the B2B side as well because there's going to be a use for it because there's a reason why that was created for the B2C side. Vice versa, on the B2B, if they ask for X, Y, and Z or maybe something for... For, that's more for the professional side or uh, whatever it may be, it, it ends up being um, an enhancement to the uh, to usage on the B2C side. So it, it's something that kind of goes hand in hand here. We look at it more as optimizing the platform itself. And by creating a more powerful, more robust platform, we're able to explore different product lines. Interesting. No, that, that makes a lot of sense. So... But then how do you manage that roadmap a bit though, right? Because obviously if you get, if you partner with a, a big accounting firm, they potentially want certain things uh, written for them only or, or just their use case. Do you kind of handle those requests or, or how did you, how do you manage those kind of big almost like you have a software business, but then you have this big partner that wants all these extra features that they they may or may not be willing to allow your other customers to use. Well, I mean, the, the way that we usually handle that is that we do this based on the licensing agreement here. Okay. And in that licensing, we own the, the product itself here completely. Okay. Um, this is a, this is, and if we create any updates or we create any new features, that remains within the product. That isn't ownership of any uh, customer. Okay. So that that ends up uh, just it, it just basically anything that is created is uh, basically free for us to use and kind of go forward. Now, in, in terms of uh, like we're going with uh, the roadmap question because uh, we kind of see this b b broke up into two buckets here. But you look at the the B to C and like you you're playing in a B to C space that makes uh, how do I say has long term potential here um, just because of the market share and kind of going in there. And potential revenue there's are, are amazing um, in terms of something you can strive for. In the short term, we kind of see this B2B option, especially with the outsourcing here and uh, kind of like using that almost as fuel to kind of push forward the, the B2C play as well. So, I mean, you, you close one deal with, you close one deal with a large firm, you might get a few thousand returns, right. uh, that, that same amount is for significantly less effort. So in the short term, it ends up, you end up using those revenues to kind of push uh, your agenda elsewhere. Interesting. No, I, I think that, that makes, makes a lot of sense. So I'm curious, though, how often or how, how tricky are you guys kind of – like tax law doesn't change a ton yearly. Is that correct? It, no, and then whenever something big does change, it, it's pretty well known. Okay. But you got to understand here is uh, when you're looking at the professionals themselves here, we're, we're using licensed CPAs. Right. I mean, the the average the average individual on our platform has about 14 years experience. Okay. Uh, so th th these aren't exactly, uh, how do I say, th th they're probably the individual's best suited for handling changes in the tax law. 
Got you. This is exactly what their purpose is here. I mean, they they went to school for years, thousands of hours of training, and then had to take really strenuous exams to get through through this. So, I mean, these these are guys who are. Uh, how do I say? It? We, we like to say it's almost like taking a a cannon to kill a mosquito. It, it's they 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 are the most experienced and top level workforce that you can't get in this industry and for the service. So uh, a change in law that that's something that the best person to ask is would be a CPA. Sure. So just I want to go back a little bit. You you covered it quickly. Basically, people like individuals can use the product. Businesses could use the product, expats can use the product, and then accounting firms, you've been partnering with them, they also use the product. Is that correct? Yeah, so what do you think of it this way? You're, you're a typical guy on the street, yeah. you can use the product here. The same way that you would order an Uber, you kind of go in, uh, you do the onboarding questions, and within about a minute, you get an upfront price quote. If okay. you're okay with the upfront price quote, you say, yes, we connect you to the licensed CPA that has the right skill set to do that work. Gotcha. Now, the, the, the matching usually occurs within 90 seconds. Wow. From there, it, we, we, like to, we, we try to make this as uh, simple and forward as possible here, where the CPA should have most, uh, if not all, the information that they need. They might ask you for a few follow-up questions, maybe ask you to upload a document or two. But then from there, it's like, hey, go about your day. Uh, this is real-time uh, on mobile and the web app. So uh, this, is where, this is one of those where... Once you submit that job, get that information there, go do, go about your day, do whatever you need to get done. CPA will send you the documents to review when it's completed. After that, there'll be a file assigned for you. Okay. Now, that same individual might have a business. Guess what? Starting a, starting a new business, uh, it, it, it's difficult to say the least. Uh, one of the last things uh, you need to be worried about is your taxes. Yeah. So with a CPA here, the, they, they can basically grab all your information and help walk people through that. I mean, we see this a lot with, especially more complex people, uh, especially like independent contractors now, because that is an ever-growing uh, part of the market now. It, it's a more complicated tax position than your typical 1040 right. and your typical W2 uh, type employee. So when you get that here, you're able to get a CPA that actually has uh, the right experience and the right skill set to basically get you the, the optimal return here. So that, 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 that's one of the things that we like to we think is great there from that perspective here. Now, when you look at businesses themselves here in terms of CPA firms, uh, we find that we can, uh, we can assist CPA firms in multiple ways. One of them is in this tax outsourcing, where tax is actually something that's very hard to make a margin in for CPA firms or traditional CPA firms to begin with. So it's actually, it's actually something where we can kind of come in and say, look, you don't have to hire that extra workforce. You don't have to... Uh, spend a lot of money training, uh, a lot of overhead to kind of uh, do uh, take take on all this overhead for a seasonal need. You're able to send that work out. You're you're getting the same quality because at the end of the day, you're you're still getting a CPA that passed all the uh, licensure requirements here, and it's getting matched with the right skill sets here. So you're you're getting the type of the, the right type of returns and type of quality. There's no sacrifice there, and uh, you, you get that done quickly and efficiently here. Uh, it, it's it's hard for CPA firms that use the service to to argue against that, uh, what we find is that we typically go in to a small small sample contract where we get a, a decent size of a number of returns just to kind of get them through the process to get that in. And, and we find that the relationship uh, organically grow very quickly from there because they, they see the benefits of just sending that work out to us. Um, that, that, that speaks for itself. And then the other uh, problem that we solve, I guess, for CPA firms is when you have warms using our our tools an internal workflow tool makes all the sense in the world here i mean you're able to not only uh effectively route different type of engagements and any engagement based deliverable to the right person but or team of, of individuals so you can also standardize the process with something that we call milestones which is actually some one of the things that we create here as you go answering the questions you can actually dictate uh what needs to be done for different type of complexities or a different type of um requests so you can actually have Top level individuals and top level um, the most ex the most experienced partners on any given field can actually create and standardize the process on how work gets done on that. And on top of that, they're getting the complete analytics there, as well as something that we created here called our internal ledgers API that allows the reiterization of uh, it's an it's an internal GUI that we created where you can pretty much uh, reiterate on the, the onboarding process here, 
and the entire uh, procedure without any tech, um, any tech, technical help here. You, you, literally, we, we, we teach, uh, we do a 30 or 45 minute class and people can basically create their own, uh, their own use cases here uh, very quickly here. So uh, when you reorder, uh, when you're kind of going through and kind of uh, trying to fix the process and, uh, and kind of like change it up, it's something that doesn't take, it won't take weeks and months. It'll take something, that'll, it'll be something that takes one or two days. So. No, very cool. Yeah. So like that was my next question. He was like, Tradition or typically, how long does it roughly take? It just takes a couple of days, obviously, depending on how complicated or how big my company is, or, or if I'm just an individual. It takes, but like it's, it seems like it's a relatively short period of uh, turnaround time. Well, it, it is. It is honestly, it all depends. Uh, it usually depends more on the customer than it does on the CPA. Uh, from think about it from the CPA's perspective and how they work on our platform. Usually, when people come on, they give us uh, the dossier of their the skill sets. We only allow them a certain number of jobs at any given time. Oh, okay. Uh, it, it's one of those. Yeah, so so we, they kind of kind of go. They have to go building up their reputation on our on our platform here. That once a job submitted and once a job has been uh, connected, now they they rate that CPA and the customer rates the CPA and the CPA rates the customer back and forth. And basically, what ends up happening here is that look, if you don't maintain a certain number of stars where right now it's about four and a half star rating um, is the minimum. If you're not maintaining that, you're not going to be able to take on more jobs. But conversely, if you're somebody that's been on the platform, after you do X number of jobs and you maintain that rating, we open you up a little bit more. Gotcha. So that way you always have the highest quality individuals. So it's kind of one of those things where if there is somebody that maybe just doesn't work well with customers or it just does I don't know. It doesn't work out for some reason. That individual only took on two or three jobs, and we find out very quickly. Guess what? They're not on the platform anymore. They won't be able to take on any more jobs. Right. Conversely, though, what you end up, what you usually end up finding here, is that CPAs are very diligent, very hardworking, and they're trying to work their way to get things done as quickly as possible, as efficiently as possible, and with the highest quality as possible. So, from their perspective, they're trying to do, they're trying to finish the job as quickly as they can in terms of, as soon as they have the information, they're working on it. Because once they're able to finish that, they're able to go and take on the next job here. So what ends up happening a lot of times here is it, it, it's usually less than a day, honestly, uh, for most tax returns. Uh, once the CPA has all the information here, I mean, I, I think that once the CPA has all the information needed, I, I, I would say, man, 70% of the jobs are probably done within the next three to four hours. So. Well, that's really great. So you guys have raised uh, money after, like within the last few years, what advice do you give to others when looking to raise money? Persistence. Persistence is key. Um, look, you're going to, uh, one of the pieces of advice I give everybody that's trying to go down the same path is that you're going to be, you're going to be talking to a lot of people with a lot of different specialties. And you just got to make sure that you keep pushing until, until you find the, 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 uh, the group that gets it. And when you do, um, take it seriously. It, 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 that, that, that's the best piece of advice I can give there. I mean, when it comes to talking with VCs and going through there, it's a process that the, the harder you push, and you got to keep pushing basically until you, you find the right uh, the find, find the right group. <laughs> no, f fair enough. Um, and I want to go back to something. So you, you got featured by Apple. Walk us through kind of the pros and cons of that happening to your business? Well, de definitely a lot of pros there. I sure. mean, we, that, that first year for MVP was very much just to uh, see if the product worked and to, to gauge the, the level of interest there. Um, when it got featured, it, it was crazy. Um, we actually got a, we were kind of on a three day work binge. Okay. Uh, all of us in the office, so me and my two founders here, and we actually got a call. We, we kind of see the numbers going crazy and spiking, and we actually got a call from our partner's wife telling us about the feature. Um, so that, that was pretty interesting, uh, to say the least here. Uh, um, but, yeah, I mean, that, that definitely it definitely helped get the name out. We, we did get a lot of introductions uh, uh, from that. A lot of people started reaching out in terms of the funding and partnership uh, and kind of help us take off there. So from a pro perspective, 
uh, for a company of our size at that point in time, it, it proved invaluable for getting the name and the brand out there and the message of what it is we're trying to do, for sure. So, no. And then con. Well, no. sorry, I was just gonna ask you. Like, uh, they, you didn't know you were gonna be featured until you just discovered it. <laughs> On that one, yeah. I mean, we've worked with them since. Okay. And sure. we've actually uh, done we've done some features where we have been multiple multiple years running one of the top tax time apps and featured on in the tax category and can't say enough good things about about Apple and the team over there. Um, I, I mean, yeah, that 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 those we usually uh end up getting contacted and go through the entire process there. But the the first feature that was on the best new apps, it it, it just came out. We we had no idea. Very cool. Oh, so. no, that's awesome. Um, any, yeah. any, like, I guess cons is kind of the wrong word. Is there anything that people should know to, or do to prepare um, if something like that happens to their company and they get featured by, obviously, like a big, well-known uh, company like Apple? Yeah, I mean, honestly, I can only speak to what we did there. Uh, I mean, we built, since day one, we built uh, the platform. Um, so it can handle a lot of traffic and okay. we were building very much long term here So it was kind of one of those words like Look if we would have skipped out on that. Yeah, you're uh, ready. And the app would have crashed on me like, like exactly that would have just been catastrophic for any company So so for me, it's kind of like you should be preparing for the, That type of scenario because what, what we've seen here, especially on the this crazy star bride is like you never know what that opportunity is gonna arise or when it's gonna arise yeah. So you always got to be ready for it, you know, so no, I, I think that's that's a really good advice. Do you have any other advice for uh, founders or co-founders or people that are looking to found their own startup? Yeah, uh, absolutely. Um, uh, the first piece of advice is, is that I would say is that if you find something that you're passionate about and you're thinking about going after, it, it is making that first step, which is going to be the hardest, is to take that plunge. I mean, what, what I find is uh, I've spoken with a lot of people that potentially want to find their own companies, and they end up almost uh, being their own worst enemies because they don't want to take that, that, that initial plunge or they don't want to take that risk here. Uh, they kind of grow comfortable kind of living in, the, in, in that employee mindset where they're fine and they're comfortable with life as is, but there's no need to shake things up. I mean, for me, the, the, the most important piece of advice I can give you is like, look, you're never going to have that opportunity if you don't take that risk and you got to be willing to take that risk to, uh, <laughs> to, to see where it comes out here. So if you don't take that first step here, uh, nothing's ever going to arise from that. Uh, there's been too many times where I hear people saying, Hey, it's a great idea. And I got this thing I want to do. And guess what? I talked to them a year later, two years later, they're still, they're still in that idea phase. They, they never, they can't get past uh, that phase of actually trying it out. So very much from my, my perspective, I, I was more along the mindset of look, got this great idea uh i'd rather get this thing try it out and see where it goes i mean if it fails then i don't have any questions of what if but it, if, it, if it succeeds then then you know what we're, we're off to the off to the races there so that, that was very much my mindset when i approached this no that that makes a lot of sense <laughs> sorry go ahead no no but, but then again maybe it's a little different because uh our backgrounds were we're a little different here just because I, I have had business in the past and kind of been doing this since I was a child and stuff. So it, maybe that makes it a lot easier for me in terms of my mindset and where I come from. Um, and being from a, coming from a Cuban family, it's kind of one of those things where it, it, I know that the persistence here, that persistent hard work can go a long way here. So it, it's one of those where I grew up in an ambiance and an environment where you saw – a lot of people basically make, uh, making something themselves coming up from nothing here. So my mindset very much was like, why can't that be us? And l let's try it. So. No, I, I think that's, that's really good advice, but we're kind of coming to the end of the show. So how about we close with mentioning where people can get more information about tax file and any other links you want to mention? Absolutely. Check us out at taxfile.com, T A X F Y L E. Um, able to get all the information there. And if you have any other questions, you can also go to uh, worklayer.com in terms of the, the licensing of the product. It's W-O-R-K-L-A-Y-E-R. -E and yeah, please, uh, we have links there to reach out to our team. Uh, we try to be as helpful as possible. So if anybody has any questions, 
we'll be on. <laughs> Perfect. Well, I really appreciate you taking the time out of your day to be on the show, and I look forward to keeping in touch with you, and have a good rest of your day, man. Likewise. Thank Thanks, you very much. Thank, Thank you for having you. me. Bye. Take, take care. Bye. Thanks for listening. Please visit our website at buildingthefutureshow.com to join the free community, sign up for our newsletter, or to sponsor the show. The music is done by Electric Mantra. You can check him out at electricmantra.com and keep building the future. <laughs>